Hello everyone, my name is Ritesh. In this video, I am going to explain about one of the methods of computation of DFT, this divide and conquer approach. Before we get into this, I'll explain in short what is a DFT and why do we need it. What is DFT? Consider the signal f of t. In order to convert this signal from time domain to frequency domain, we have several methods depending on the type of the signal. Let's say we have continuous and periodic signal. For this, we use complex Fourier series. And for continuous and aperiodic signal, we have Fourier time zone. What if we have discrete time signals? For discrete and periodic signals, we use discrete Fourier transform. And for discrete and aperiodic signals, we have discrete time Fourier transform. Alright, cool. Now this is just what I said, but in a tabular fashion. Discrete Fourier transform. This is a computation tool to evaluate Fourier transform on a digital computer. Unlike discrete time Fourier transform, which is defined for finite and infinite length sequences, discrete Fourier transform is defined only for sequences of finite length only. It is obtained by sampling one period of Fourier transform at a finite number of frequency points, sampling frequency. The mathematical version for discrete Fourier transform is this one, which means capital X of k is summation small xn times e power minus a 2 by k n by capital n where smaller terms from 0 to n minus 1. Now this e power, now this exponential part can be rewritten as cos 2 pi k n by capital n minus i sin 2 pi k n by capital n since we have e power i theta is equal to cos theta plus i sin theta. On simplification, we get capital X of k is 1 by n times summation small xn times wn power nk, where small n again runs from 0 to capital N minus 1, where wn power nk is called twiddle factor. Now, let this equation be equation 1, as we will be using this further in the coming slides. For the derivation of this, please check the link in the description, as I am not going to going in depth in this, and I am simply just brushing up all these things. Alright, cool. Now let's see why do we need DFT and where do we use it mostly. DFT is one of the most important tools in digital signal processing. The three major use cases of DFT are first, DFT can calculate a signal's frequency spectrum. Second, DFT can find a system's frequency response from the system's impulse response and vice versa. This allows systems to be analyzed in frequency domain just as convolution allows systems to be analyzed in time domain. Third, DFT can be used as an intermediate step in most more elaborated signal processing techniques. A classic example of this is FFT convolution, an algorithm for convolving signals that is hundreds of times faster than conventional methods. Alright, so now let's dive into our main topic of this video, that is divide and conquer approach. Consider the conventional approach for computing DFT by matrix multiplication. Now, the equation 1, which I got earlier, can be rewritten as, showing this as an endpoint DFT, capital X is equal to dn times small x. Now, what does this mean? This is represented in matrix form, where dn is a coefficient matrix of order n cross n, just this, this part, small x is the input signal, represented as represented in n cross 1 vector form, which is this, and capital X is the output signal represented in n cross 1 vector form, which is this, this part. Now, for this endpoint DFT, we need to compute n square complex multiplications and n square minus n complex additions. Now, how do we get this formula? For this, I'll suggest you to refer a video by a friend of mine. I'll put the video link in the description too. Okay, now that's really a big number for some larger values of n. So one way of speeding up this process is to use a more efficient hardware. Another way is to reduce the number of combinations, which is the main idea we follow in fast Fourier transform. This approach is based on decomposition of an endpoint DFT into successively smaller DFTs. This basic approach leads to a family of computationally efficient algorithms known collectively as fast Fourier transform algorithms, abbreviated as FFT. In the coming slides, I'll be explaining the steps for computing an endpoint DFT using divide and conquer approach. 
step one consider the input signal as endpoints so it's called endpoint dft oh, it's obvious now break dot n as a product of two numbers assuming n is in prime say n is equal to l times n for prime values of n we can use zero padding and factorize it say for example if n is n as 500 we can take l is equal to 4 and m as 25 step 2 arrange the sequence small x of n as a 2d matrix indexed by small l cross small m where small m ranges from 0 to capital m minus 1 and small m ranges from 0 to capital m minus 1 which means this is now a 2d matrix that has a capital m number of rows and capital m number of columns now for this arrangement it can be done in two ways row wise and column wise now what does this mean let's say we have input signal small xn as x0 x1 x2 and so on till xn minus 1 in row wise we fill the elements one after another in a row and when that row is filled we go to the next row for x1 x2 x0 x1 x2 x3 let's say m equal to 5 we have four number of columns so we have x0 x1 x2 x3 and x4 and then x5 is filled in the next row now this is a 2d matrix of order l cos m where the index number l in terms of small l and cap and small m is given as n is equal to lm plus cap lm plus m similarly in column wise presentation they we fill elements one after another in a column and when that column is filled we go to the next column again this too is a 2d matrix of order l cos m where small n the index number is is given as ml plus small l step 3 follow the same analogy for the output response capital s of k as in step 2 which means and in the sequence capital X of n as a 2D matrix index by small p cross small q where small p lies in the interval 0 to capital minus 1 and small q lies in the interval 0 to capital minus 1 which means this 2 is a 2D matrix which has n number of rows and n number of columns consider the output signal capital X of k as capital X of 0 x of 1 x of 2 x of 1 to x of minus 1 Again, this arrangement can be done in two ways, the row wise and column wise arrangements. In row wise arrangements, the index capital K in terms of K small, the index small K in terms of small K and Q is given as PM plus Q. And in column wise arrangement, K is given as LQ plus P. Alright, now step 4. Modify the DFT formula into 2D to accommodate and is equal to LM factorization. So how can we do this? We follow column wise representation for x and, and row wise representation for capital X of k. We, sub, we substitute the formulas of small n and small k in equation 1. For column wise representation of x and we have small n as this and for row wise representation of capital X of k we have small k as this. Substituting in this, substituting in equation 1 we get, we get this following expression consider just the total factor part thus far when expanded we get this from the symmetry and linear trig properties of total factor we get these results now substituting these results in the equation we get previously we have the final dft equation and which can be represented as this okay well that's a big formula to remember now i'll explain how to understand this formula in the next slide Understanding the equation. First, I'll break this in three parts given by the colors red, yellow, and violet. Consider the red part first. This little thing over here. This part is a M point DFT. Now we need to compute this for capital N number of rows. It's an M point DFT because here small m varies from 0 to capital M minus 1. And we need to compute this for N number of times because here we have small l over here let's say this as flq so we have flq as summation small n runs from 0 to capital m minus 1 xlm times wm power mq where q ranges from 0 to capital m minus 1 now consider the yellow part 
Now again, this FLQ is multiplied with W and power LQ. Let this product be GLQ. We have GLQ is equal to W and power LQ times FLQ. Where L lies in the interval 0 to capital minus 1 and Q lies in the interval 0 to capital minus 1. And finally, come consider the violet part. Here we compute the L point DFTs. We compute this for m number of columns where q ranges from 0 to capital minus 1 of the array glq. So finally we have x of pq is equal to summation of small l runs from 0 to capital minus 1 glq times wl power lp. Alright, cool. So summarizing this algorithm, we perform the following operations. We first write n as l times m and we store the signal column wise. Later we compute the m point DFTs for each row and we multiply the resulting array by the base factors of total factors cap W n power cap power LQ. And we compute the L point DFT of each column and then we finally read the resulting array row wise. Since you have taken the row wise arrangement for the output matrix capital X of K. Now let's find the computational complexity of this algorithm in computing FLQ, which is this expression. We calculate L number of M point DFTs. For one M point DFT, we have number of additions as M times M minus 1 and number of multiplications as M square. So similarly, for L such M point DFTs, we have a number of additions as LM times M minus 1 and multiplications as LM square. Now, in computing GLQ, which is this expression, this is just a scalar multiplication. We have n such multiplications. Total addition still this step is Lm times m minus 1, which can be represented as equation 1. And total multiplication still this step is Lm squared plus n, which can be represented as equation 2. In computing XPQ, which is this expression, this is an m number of l point dfts for one l point dft we have number of additions as l times l minus 1 and number of multiplications as l square similarly for m such l point dfts we have number of additions as m l times l minus 1 so it can be represented as equation 3 and number of multiplications as m l square which is represented as equation 4 now total number of mutations in, in this algorithm is number of additions can be calculated by adding 1 and 3 equations. The net result is ml times m plus l minus 2 and the total number of amplifications which can be found by adding equations 2 and 4 which we have got previously and the result is ml times m plus l plus 1. Let's compare and analyze this with that in the general method. Take n is equal to 1000. In general method, the number of additions are n times n minus 1. Substituting n is equal to 1000, we get approximately 10 power 6 month additions. Similarly, number of multiplications is given by n square. Substituting n equal to 1000 here, we get 10 power 6 number of multiplications. In divide and conquer approach, let's assume l as 2 and m as 500. lm is equal to 1000 again here. So, number of additions are lm times m plus l minus 2. Giving the values l equal to 2 and m equal to 500, we have 5 times 10 power 5 number of multiplications, 5 times 10 power 5 number of additions. Similarly, 5 times 10 power 5 number of multiplications too. In this particular case, both the additions and multiplications are reduced to half. Hence, reducing the computational time and increasing the efficiency of the system. In the general method, the time complexity required for computing DFT is order of n square. But in, in this case, the time complexity reduces to order of n log n. Let's summarize what we have discussed in this video. We have seen what is a DFT and why do we need DFT. And from that, we dive down into the main topic of this video, which is divide and conquer approach. And then we say, and then we have seen the steps for calculating and point DFT using divide and conquer approach. 
understanding the equation, the algorithm, and then we finally found the computational complexity, and then and we even compared it with that in the general method. So the references I followed are two books, one by John G. Perkins and D. G. Manalakis, Digital Signal Processing Principles, Algorithms and Applications, and another one by Stephen W. Smith, Digital Signal Processing, a Practical Guide for Engineers and Scientists. And followed an article by Sho Nakago. Link for this article will be in the description too. If you have any queries, feel free to post them in the comment section of this video. And finally, thank you.